We're here at Distributech and I've met up with Jojo. Jojo, over the past couple of years, when I would be looking at blockchain in the energy industry, one company name kept popping up on most of the lists, Electron. What are you guys up to in Electron? So, there's a lot of answers to that, but essentially we built a platform that connects distributed energy resources to grid operators. Um, and we call it digital infrastructure, uh, because the fact is it's shared and it has to be shared. Right. So we're very familiar with this idea of kind of physical infrastructure and the energy system, like we all have to share the same pipes and wires. So we talk about digital infrastructure, like we all have to share, share the same sets of data. Right. So for example, like um, our core platform is an identity platform. Like everyone has to call the same asset by the same name. Like really, really basic because the same asset is going to be selling local services to this distribution network, balancing services to so the transmission else. network, and maybe energy to this local community or maybe the supplier. Like who knows? And if they don't, and, if they don't have the same name, well, best yeah, of luck to you. Exactly, and green credits to someone else. So we're moving away from this world where like the kind of trading counterparties is, is the kind of important bit, and we're going towards a, a, a world in which there are lots and lots of different attributes uh, that are valuable to yeah. a single energy export, like. How big are you? How clean are you? How local are you? How responsive are you? And until the asset has that identity stamp and that kind of qualification, it can't act in those markets. Okay. So essentially, we're building that identity system for the for the assets, and we're doing that with big kind of grid operators who kind of care about this coordination. And then we're building the local markets that create the need and the requirement for that platform um, with with some of the asset operators and and traders. We're basically trying to like hurry this transition along to like clean, like cheap, uh, resilient energy systems by enabling trading. Now, when I saw you present at European Utility Week and at other events in Europe in the past couple of 12 months, are you primi primarily focused in the UK to date, or are you, you're here in the US, or are you offering, are you developing this with other companies across the globe? Yeah, so, so, so we are working in a number of places. Um, we started in the UK. Um, we, uh, our, our kind of flagship identity platform is uh, being developed with National Grid and two other yeah. operators in the UK. And there's a bunch of different trading platforms we're building on top of that that reference the attributes of those energy assets. Right. So we've got live projects in the UK, Switzerland and uh, South Korea. And we'll be thrilled to have something announced in North America this year. Okay. Especially in space. Yeah. yeah. Something coming. Okay. Now, when we were chatting earlier, we were chatting about blockchain and look at all the, the technologies and the development and it's fascinating to watch. But you made a comment and you said, at Electron, you look to use the right solution for the right problem. Mm. How would, can you elaborate on that? Yes. Yeah, so our core thesis on blockchain is this fantastic uh, coordination technology. Um, when you need to share a certain set of data. So the data you need to share is, uh, is I just talked about the, the asset identity, the yeah. name, and then associating the attributes and contractual relationships with that asset. Uh, we're building local markets on top of that that reference the asset register, but in a lot of cases, we're not necessarily decentralizing those local markets because there is a natural central, count central counterparty. Yep. And I think people don't see decentralization necessarily as a spectrum. But it's quite important to, to, to decide like what has to be shared, like what's beneficial if it's genuinely shared, and what actually is fine. You, you don't need to being centralised. So, so the only piece that actually needs to be decentralised is this asset register. Because if you don't decentralise the asset register, you create the right solution at once, and it's this kind of static thing. A silo. Whereas what we want to create is this living, breathing, transactional thing that can be continuously updated by people at the edge of the grid, like you know. And if you can find it easy to think about with cars, because we all interact with yeah. cars. So you get the car advantage, uh, example, but it's the most far out. Far out. Like, the, take, a, take a single electric vehicle. One person might own the battery, a different person might own the car and be driving around making the decisions of where to charge. Right. A different person owns the charging station. There might be a different supplier associated with the car and the charging station. Like, there's all sorts of different contractual relationships associated with that one car. Right. And every time it exports power, it's affecting system balancing, it's affecting local optimization, it, you know, it, it's affecting a lot of different things. So, so, so energy is like the quintessential, I think, coordination problem. Like one action affects multiple different parties with potentially competing, potentially cooperative interests. And if they can just tell what like what asset is doing what to who at one point, you can actually start to find Efficiencies in the one, grid. one version of the truth. One version of the truth, and, and 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 I think the truth is the energy system is becoming this really really complex system with lots and lots and lots of different vectors, uh, and and you can't solve a complex system 
from the top from this kind of perfect knowledge position. But what you can do is get multiple parties to share information around what is in the system and what's the people doing and have one version of the truth without having one arbiter of the truth. And that's what we're trying to build on this asset register. Wow. You're tackling all the small problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did start trying to just create some local energy markets. Uh, I think that's an interesting story in itself. Like, we definitely started from the point of you know, transacted super energy isn't that ideal. And then you go two or three levels down and you find that actually the coordination infrastructure, the digital infrastructure yeah. that we talk about, actually doesn't exist yet for people even to tell this party that this thing is doing their action in, in their region. So you've got to build that first and you build the markets on top of it. And I used to be of the view that wouldn't it be great if we had one market and it would be so coordinated, but I think now I'm kind of understanding there's going to be multiple green certificates markets, there's going to be multiple local energy trading markets. And as long as we can create the infrastructure on which they can all exist and be coordinated with one another, we can still maximize the value the of... The one asset doesn't have multiple identities and you're, you don't know what you're managing at the time. Yeah, exactly. The one battery isn't constrained just to sell balancing services to this guy when it can also sell location services and power to this guy. Like, understand this export as a package good. Wow. Hey, Camara, I wish you well. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you.